This was our patch. Uh, the, uh, Kevin Chilton was in, uh, in charge of uh, making sure it all got approved. Uh, most of the design was actually from Tom Jones. Uh, this is us while we're on orbit. You can tell that we're having a good time. This was our uh, crew press conference uh, while we were up there. And uh, just gives you another uh, chance uh, uh, to see all of us up in space. This was uh, the morning uh, we actually launched. We're headed out to the pad. Uh, we went out twice and, uh, and launched on the second attempt. So we were, we were happy to do that. It turned out that the weather wasn't that great after we launched. So if we hadn't gotten off that day, we'd have been waiting around for some time. The vehicle uh, really feels great when those main engines finally start. They run for about seven seconds or so. And we launched right at the crack of dawn. Uh, so as you can see here, I know some of you were down there for the launch. It had to be absolutely uh, beautiful. The only better view was uh, in the rear view mirror. Uh, that was the view we had as we were headed up there. And um, we've got a number of launch pictures here just because uh, I think it was an incredible launch. You can see we're arcing up uh, toward the north, heading into a 57 degree orbit. It was a beautiful, crisp morning. So they were able to track us for a long range. So we've got a lot of, uh, of good launch video here. And uh, it feels like you're awfully small out on the end of this giant explosion, which is exactly what it looks like here. You'll see the SRBs come off, and then you'll see a, sh see a shot from the orbiter itself as the SRBs come off. And then you can see the, it was so clear that morning that they've got some good shots here of the SRBs falling away or floating away. And the main engines continued to burn. Uh, our children told us we looked like a star gone over the horizon. And uh, really, uh, really felt great to get into orbit that day. Here's the external tank separation. We don't see this real time, and that's probably good that you don't see all those things floating around. <laughs> Might make you just a little bit nervous, but uh, that's all uh, basically ice and things like that floating around. It's not really a problem. And uh, the next uh, shot is uh, one um, Jay took uh, after we rotated the vehicle to get some uh, footage of the external tank, and Linda was shooting some uh, 35 millimeter shots at this time to get data on the tank. Now we're on orbit. Uh, this is the sunrise, and as the sun comes up, it's just a beautiful view of seeing the tail of the orbiter come into view, and then our uh, payload in the payload bay. You can see the large antenna structure, uh, the JPL project and the German and Italian space agencies, the large antenna. And in the foreground, where you can't see it, is uh, the, the platform for the uh, sensor from the Langley Research Center. In the forward flight deck, Sid's busy here putting in one of the 412 maneuvers that we did during the mission. Uh, basically, we wait for one maneuver to time out and then enter in the next one. Um, those allowed us to do some uh, yaw steering to help the, uh, the radar ambiguities. Another major thing we performed during the mission were all the tape changes, and Tom's doing one here. We did, uh, I think, 163 tape changes on time during the mission. Uh, to re that's where all the radar data was recorded, and we had two recorders on the, uh, the left side of the YAF flight deck where Tom is working here and, a, and another one on the other side for three total. The F flight deck was where the action was on this mission, there's no doubt about it. And we had some extra panel covers made with Velcro squares on them. You can see them in the back. And uh, basically, it held all of our cameras and lenses. And uh, Sid was <laughs> using the Lenhoff, and Chili's just surrounded by uh, Hasselblad camera bodies and a spot meter or two and uh, ready to go to work. <laughs> this is our Lenhoff film changing bag. I did it a couple of times during the mission. We had to change out our Lenhoff film. Uh, and once your hands are in there, you can't come out till you're done. And there's, uh, you've got exposed film in there, a new film, and the role you're uh, trying to work it into, and finally, success. <laughs> I think Jay did most of our film changing during the mission. Briefly, a nice view from one of the aft cameras showing the payload and our aft windows. Um, the aft flight deck was really where we did all of our uh, work on the daylight passes. We were doing a lot of photography in support of the radar observations. Uh, on the left there, you see uh, the Linhoff camera mounted to a bracket on uh, window number uh, seven. And you could tilt that to line it up with the radar uh, bore sight. And then Rich here is working with the 40 millimeter lens out the window, and we had a lot of handheld shots of uh, the targets of interest to the radar and the maps folks. This is a sweeping pass uh, coming southeast across the California coastline, uh, north of San Francisco, across the uh, uh, approaches to the Sierra Nevada. And very soon you're going to see some landmarks out here that you'll recognize from uh, your uh, geography lessons. Uh, the Sierra Nevada is the snow capped range here. You come into view of Pyramid Lake right here, and then Lake Tahoe coming into view at the bottom of the screen. 
And as we walked down to Sierra Nevada, we saw our uh, super site uh, for hydrology at Mammoth Mountain, right next to Mono Lake here. This is where Mammoth Mountain is. And then if you follow the Owens Valley down the front of the Sierra Nevada, you'll come to um, uh, Owens Dry Lake, right down at the bottom here, stepping across to Panamint Valley, and then Death Valley. And here you see Cotton Ball Basin and the Bad Water, the lowest point in North America, at some 200 feet below sea level. This is a jet propulsion lab uh, graphic showing our radar imagery collected on the mission laid onto a topographic map of Death Valley. This is the northern end of the valley in Cotton Ball Basin, and as you fly uh, through this virtual reality uh, presentation north out of Death Valley, we sweep around the northern end of the Panamint Range, and this is the stovepipe wells uh, target in Death Valley that we imaged many times on the mission, and we studied the interaction of uh, the surface there with the wind and measured that with uh, the radar roughness measurements. Now you can look back south down Death Valley to Cotton Ball Basin and Badwater, and these are the Panamint Ranges and the Black Mountains on the left. Here on the aft flight deck again, you see uh, Jay using the um, 90 millimeter uh, Linhoff camera. So we had two big lenses out the back window to, to document the radar uh, sweep across the earth. And I'm using the spot meter here to get the right exposure level for all of, all of the cameras we're using on the aft flight deck. This is Siberia. It's so bright with the snow cover that you actually have to use sunglasses to get a good look at the surface down there. And we saw the Trans-Siberian Railway region many times in the first third of the mission as the top of our orbit took us over to Siberia. We had a lot of uh, ecological and geological targets in that region. Now we have a, a picture here of Jay and Rich conducting one of the many maneuvers uh, uh, on the flight to uh, point the radar accurately. And uh, as they entered the, muter, uh, entered the maneuver into the orbiter computers, then the orbiter did a slow walk during our passes to uh, point the radar uh, just so. This is uh, the Sahara Desert region. We had a lot of investigations here to use the radar to penetrate below the dry sand in the Sahara to look at the bedrock below. And the drainages revealed by penetrating the sand sheet here show us how those drainages were formed and what the past climate of the Sahara was like. This is our payload commander, Linda Godwin, on the aft flight deck, getting ready for a pass down uh, over the Ukraine and the Caspian Sea. Here you see the many farms in uh, the Ukraine, beautiful area from out there, getting down to the area uh, near the oil fields at the top of uh, the Caspian Sea. And here's a beautiful geological feature there. Going out to the Caspian, which is a very interesting feature studied uh, by a lot of the scientists here at Johnson Space Center. The level of the Caspian Sea has changed greatly, and by studying features like the seacoast here, the folks here can tell how high the sea level has gone or how low it's gone. It actually has gone up about two meters in the last few months, about six feet. You can imagine what that would do uh, to us here in Houston. But you see the roads and so forth down there. Here's a beautiful uh, picture of the radar and the payload bay showing uh, everything out there. And here's the uh, red shift wearing blue shirts, on, uh, you were the, red shirt. oh, right. <laughs> on uh, the flight deck. And you can see just how busy it was getting ready for one of these data passes. Overlaid here with, on the outside, is our um, TV cameras out in the payload bay. And on the inside, that little square is the radar. So you can see how much more is revealed by the radar. These white blobs that you see turning into black in the radar area are frozen lakes in Canada. We were talking to some of those people on frozen lakes. Uh, down here on the shuttle amateur radio experiment, uh, built by folks at Motorola and here at Johnson Space Center, and we uh, love talking to people on the ground with that. It really made us feel connected with them. We talked to students in nine schools throughout the world. And that's not all we did up there with the schools. We spent a lot of time on educational activities up there, both live downlinks that some of you may have seen, uh, and making an educational film on geography, which we hope will be released for students in uh, schools here real soon. It's shift handover, and uh, Sid kicked the blue shift down to the mid-deck, and that's what you see us doing. Uh, Tom coming down, and I'm shortly followed by myself here. We're coming down to the mid-deck to do some of the orbiter activities associated with, uh, with maintaining the spacecraft in, in good condition. You're going to see a shot of uh, TJ here working out on the ergometer. Right behind Tom, over his left shoulder, is our rowing machine, which we also carried up there. Some people use the rower, some people use the ergometer. For longer flights, these things are almost critical to the operation. And uh, the infamous galley is just above the rower there where we had some problems. This was an experiment of uh, moving a rigid body in space, um, uh, getting ready for the sleep shift. It's uh, sped up a little bit. It's two to one, just so we can get it done in time. Uh, then we had to slow the film down to show it to you. <laughs> but the sleep stations were really handy. We had a good time uh, with them. We used a four-tier sleep station. The bottom tier was used for uh, strictly uh, stowage. And, <laughs> and we did hot bunk.
<laughs> but the, uh, the sleep stations really provide a good uh, quiet and uh, uh, light tight area for us to uh, get a restful uh, six to eight hours of sleep during each period. You're going to follow this with some more uh, orbiter activities, uh, mainly some uh, meal operations and some cleaning. And you'll see the crew doing different operations and how we maintain good hygiene in space. Uh, this is Chili trying to show off his body. Uh, <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> But uh, it's interesting to take, take a sponge bath up there, which is, of course, the way we had to do it. Uh, you just use the uh, hygiene hose and uh, put some uh, liquid soap on the rag along with uh, some water and, and uh, wash off your body, especially needed after an exercise period. Uh, a quick view of some of the food operations. Uh, behind uh, the crew on the forward flight deck lockers are three food trays, which you can see are in use right now. Uh, they were useful for stowage. This is a water dump, a unique view of that. Uh, Chile has set up the water dump looking out the pilot's window number one and then uh, giving you a close-up view of, uh, of how it forms the, uh, the ice particles immediately on expulsion into space. And uh, following this, we're going to have some other experiments with uh, uh, space science here. This is seeing how a gyroscope works in space. These are our gyro-stabilized binoculars, and what I've done is I've just turned them on and you can see how they uh, try to maintain a, a position in space. These were particularly useful for looking at some of the Earth observation sites uh, for close-up views. Now, uh, now we're over to Chile. Well, you'd think someone had flown before would know how to eat cashews in space, but <laughs> of course, I got a little help there. <laughs> she does. <laughs> got a lot of help, I should say. <laughs> Uh, you got to enjoy yourself while you're up there in the little free time that you have between, in particular when you got the whole shift or both shifts together. And Tom found a unique way to use the uh, tips paper roll when the roll was out to turn it into a blowgun for shooting uh, malted milk balls across the cockpit there. I think uh, Jay was declared the champ here, the only one that could successfully <laughs> grab one. Rich had done an experiment with fluids on his previous flight, and so uh, he, he convinced us that we needed to do a little experiment on this flight. And this is always a good thing to show the uh, school children how uh, fluids behave floating free in gravity and to demonstrate to them that this is not, in fact, a bubble, but a solid sphere of liquid. And, and Rick demonstrates that here as it wicks away onto the uh, towel just before it hits the overhead window. Uh, this is the entry into, or the beginning of my favorite part of the flight, which is entry. And here we are on FCS checkout day, uh, the day before our first attempt to come home. We didn't have many payloads that moved on this, so we had to throw the Elevon in here coming up during the <laughs> FCS <laughs> checkout. Um, the radar is pretty static back there in the aft. But entry was pretty uh, fantastic, and uh, of course, you, there's always a little bit of regret with your final uh, view of the last uh, sunset on orbit before you come home, but um, as uh, the sun sets on Endeavour here, uh, we, we come back to a spectacular sequence here that uh, Tom Jones shot carrying the uh, camcorder in the back seat during entry here, you can see over Shid's, Sid's shoulder in the front, the orange glow out the front, and now Tom zooms in on his mirror to look out the overhead window, and here's the wake of the orbiter during entry. And so you can see the hot plasma forming the plume of fire behind the orbiter. Uh, out Sid's window, it's still hot and glowing. Out my window, you can see that uh, we've gone into daylight. And in this tremendous right turn that we made for the majority of uh, re-entry around the uh, Crater Lake and Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen in California and on down the San Joaquin Valley. It was just a tremendous uh, re-entry view as we came down the whole length of the state of California. Sid did a beautiful job rolling us onto the hack and uh, flew right on the money all the way around here. You see him rolling out on final on the outer glide slope. Tom's still holding this 500-pound camera now. Uh, <laughs> looking out the uh, over my sh right shoulder, you can see the uh, ramp there at Edwards Air Force Base. And uh, Tom was a real trooper. Uh, carrying that thing all the way down uh, through landing here, having it at the ready to, to film a few sequences here. An absolutely uh, beautiful day to land at Edwards Air Force Base, and Sid made an equally beautiful touchdown, nice and smooth. On uh, the hard runway there, runway 22, we were constrained because of our weight and CG to land on a hard surface runway. So uh, we had no choice other than Kennedy and, and Edwards 22 for, for coming home this day, and we were happy to come home uh, after waving off the first opportunity. Uh, the drag chute worked as advertised, and the rollout was great. Again, Tom looking over my right shoulder here as we jettisoned the drag chute, uh, rolling out on the runway at Edwards Air Force Base to wheel stop. And I think after wheel stop, it's kind of a bittersweet moment for the whole crew. Um, you're certainly happy and pleased to be back home. Uh, you hate to see the mission end, but uh, one more time around the cockpit here. Uh, the congratula congratulations for Sid for a wonderful landing and a happy flight deck crew, and no longer a rookie Tom Jones getting ready for his <laughs> next flight. <laughs> <laughs>